play at Novabet. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Irish Angle on Jump To It. This week, I'm glad to say we've got a new sponsor for the show, which is Bookmakers Navi Bet. So uh, make sure you open an account with them at some stage, keep us all happy and keep us in a job. Uh, first of all, I'd like to introduce Emma and Johnny, who are with me to have a look at all things Irish Champions Festival weekend. So we're going to have a good talk about that over the next 35, 40 minutes, hopefully. Emma, Johnny, welcome to the show. Thanks, Vinny. Thanks, Vincent. Now, first things, loads of things to go through here. Um, I don't even know where to start. So much. first of all, Aidan O'Brien, um, 4,000 winners. That's a hell of a milestone, isn't it? I can't believe anyone would ever get near those sort of numbers again. Uh, for a guy who started out as an amateur jockey on the circuit, then started training national hunt, and now he rules the world, as we saw with uh, Augustus Rodan and what he did there as well. Emma, he's uh, he's been around longer than you've been alive in this game, um, but he's, he's some trainer, isn't he? Yeah, it was some achievement. Like, it was kind of the Aidan O'Brien show on Saturday, I suppose. Um, like, I suppose just taking Augusto O'Dan as one kind of example, like, to to bring him back kind of twice now, or maybe even three times, I suppose. Um, like, that, that was a massive performance. Um, yeah, like, I don't think we'll ever probably see a trainer like him. He's probably, well, maybe going back in time, people might disagree, but he probably... The best of all time it's probably fair enough to say and you know he's so young as well you'd actually forget that you know he's got a long way to go yet in his career so what kind of numbers he'll finish up with will be um eye-watering i'd imagine i don't know how he stays so focused on what he does because like it, you know it's not a nine to five job he has and he's been doing it i presume seven days a week 365 days a year for the the last 30 odd years there must come a time when he just gets ah oh, jeez i can't do this again not another set of yearlings coming in to get ready for the next year and so on uh, i i know i there's days i flounder thinking about what i've got to do during the week what about you johnny how does he do it i think he's a bit mad to be honest um i think he's a that cross between just genius and like totally different to the rest of us as you say it's it's extremely challenging and dealing with cool more can't be straightforward either of any um there's a incredible pressure on what is basically a huge huge commercial machine and uh we might talk about the way that the horses were campaigned this weekend to my mind um when you run these horses like he did this weekend you're working back from their stallion prospects or you're working back from what they will become as stallions and that's why a lot of people don't really warm i think to the whole flat game and by extension to cool more because it's so commercial and um you know, they're, they're the cool more faces when you see them at the races. You know, it's not like they're going to get a rapturous applause because they're very wealthy people and all that. But Aiden has to deal with this. And Aiden is a very humble man. I've never seen him praise himself. And I think he's pretty much, I think he, he admitted himself in an interview before he kind of has like borderline ADHD where everything has to be perfect. I remember him speaking in the Irish Times in an interview one time where his toothbrush, his toothbrush has to be faced in a particular way when he goes to bed. And you might laugh at that, but I think that's his. That's kind of part of like I might have a bit of ADHD myself, but um, that attention to detail and that I think that break, that makes him a little bit apart. And it's, it's funny just watching the photos of of the races yesterday and afterwards and seeing Anna there and remembering the incident that kind of ended her career when she had that um, fall on the flat and thinking of how much family life means to him and how immersed they all are in racing as well and. Um, it, 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 I think the fact that the family have done so well and have been so involved means an awful lot to him. And I think he gets a great kick out of that. But um, I'd say if he weren't training, he wouldn't know what to be doing, to be honest. I think that's where I'm going wrong is the toothbrush. I'm going to have to work, work on that one from now on. Um, mo moving on to some other things. Uh, the attendance is over the weekend, uh, which is always a, a talking point for these big festivals. So we had... Let's have a look at it. Leopardstown, 10,019 turned up compared to slightly more last year, 10,280. The Curra booked the trend a good bit. They only had 6,742 last year when they had desperate weather. This year, 8,646. So overall, the weekend was up on last year, but it's still a long way behind what we were dealing with going back in the inaugural one in 2014. I think there was 24-odd thousand, 24,100 or something turned up then. This year, it's 18,500. You compare that then to the Dublin Racing Festival, which took place in February, which is obviously a big weekend in um, in Leopardstown. There was 34,500 there, which was a record for that particular event over the two days. So you're talking nearly double the numbers go to the National Hunt Festival in February compared to the two days of Champions Festival weekend at Leopardstown and the Curra. 
So my question is, first of all, should both days be in Leopardstown? Would that make it a, make it a better weekend for people, particularly they're, they're trying to attract foreign um, race goers coming in mainly from the UK, but also some come in from further afield? Would they be better off having both days at Leopardstown? What do you think, Emma? I suppose logistics wise, like you said, it probably would make more sense if they're trying to attract the, the race goers from all around the world. It's a lot easier to get to Leopardstown than to the Cora. And to be honest, I, like, I think Leopardstown is probably the best track in the country. So just to have probably the best weekend of flat racing there would make sense to me. Um, it's going to just going to be a lot easier to attract a crowd. Even an Irish crowd is going to find it a lot easier to get to Leopardstown. You know, you can hop on the Lewis straight there basically nearly um and there's just something there's just something about the car i think like we talk about it plenty probably nearly every time there's big racing at the car and a lot of people were suggesting that the car might be cursed because they got an awful downpour of rain whereas the sun was shining in leopardstown all day on saturday so it, it probably would make sense to me and like you know like we kind of mentioned before on uh, before we came on air like just preparing the track you know there's to have it all in the one place and yeah i mean Obviously, look, the car is probably the headquarters, I suppose, of flat racing in the country. So they do have to get the big fixtures as well. But I think just if they're trying to grow the festival, um, having it all in Leopardstown probably makes more sense. Like, I mean, if you think about if you have if you're someone coming from England or from even further afield from Hong Kong or somewhere like that, and they're coming to two days of flat racing in Ireland you know they have to book probably different hotels if they're going to both places it's a lot harder for them to get there um I just think the atmosphere in Leopardstown is is just different to the car as well it's kind of it's, it's I think it's just the best best track best track in the country for a race goer to go to in my own opinion anyway um I was at Leopardstown on Saturday and I know people were I saw a few people on social media afterwards saying that it was a bit flat but I, I thought it was a great day to be honest. The crowd wasn't massive when you compare it to the likes of the Dublin Racing Festival, but I think that's just the way it is in Ireland. There isn't the same kind of following for a flat meeting, so you can't really expect to get the same kind of buzz around the place. It's just always going to be a different vibe, but I thought it was a great day in Leopardstown. Like the sun, the weather obviously helped it a lot, and maybe if people are going to deflate it a bit, like you have to consider the rugby was on and there was soccer on and, you know, kind of competing with that isn't going to be easy. But yeah, I thought it was a great day. Um, I wasn't in the car now, so I can comment on that. But they were unlucky with the downpour of, of rain. Um, yeah, but yeah, Leopardstown probably would be the easier place, I'd say, for, for, the, for the two days. Yeah, never happened, Johnny, will it? Because um, it makes too much sense. That's the problem, isn't it? Yeah, I, I'd actually, I wouldn't be in favour of this because I think the car is our premier flat track for one thing and uh, I think it's the fairest track and um, I mentioned cool more, Vinny, and I think it's been implied that when the Cora was being done up and they had the classic meets and even they had the champion stakes there when the place was basically, um, you know, like a, a building site and it looked terrible, but I mean, there was a suggestion in the background that cool more and um, themselves were very, very keen that the Cora was maintained and I think whether you like it or not, cool more holds a lot, lot of... Uh, sway when it comes to decision making in Irish racing and, and I don't see that happening and um, to be fair now with the money that was spent on the Curra I, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be in favour of Leopardstown having both meets Leopardstown has the Ledger Leopardstown has the Moigar Leopardstown has the National Stakes anyway so you're taking that all sorry the Curra has so you're taking that all away from the Curra and uh, I love the Curra as a track Emma touched on an interesting point there about the flat atmosphere, like I, I just I have noticed this a lot of meetings myself. The, the crowd don't get involved anymore. Like when, and a lot of them just watch race in the stands and don't even open their mouths. Like we should be cheering horses home. And if you if you're going to a race meeting and there's no atmosphere, why would you go to a football game if there was no atmosphere? It was like when I went to football games during COVID, I wouldn't go to football games if during COVID again because it was boring. There was no atmosphere, there's no light to watch that watch at home. So if you're going to the race meeting and there's no atmosphere, why would you pay in? and get nothing uh, that you won't get on your couch. So I think it's something that, I don't know what the race course need to do, but we need to get atmosphere back because if you watch back, say, Denoli when in the Hennessy, listen, it, it's impossible not to get emotional with the, with the roar of the crowd as he passed the line. And I think that's kind of gone from meetings a lot. And it's certainly gone from the flat. It's not great at National Hunt either. And if you go to race meetings and the crowd is silent, what's the point like? So I think we need to work on that. I'm, I'm not really sure what the answer is. No, neither am I. Well, let's look at the other thing you talked about. Coolmore's influence uh, across the sport, which we know is very strong. But over that weekend, we've just had Champions Weekend. There are five two-year-old races. Are they necessary? First first of all, we had a sales race, Tattersall sales race on Sunday, 300k in prize money, and yet there's only 12 horses turn up for it. As well as that, some of them look to be bordering on useless. Some of the ones that ran it, not saying that the first four or five home are probably okay, 
but there were horses in that that, that shouldn't be on a so-called champions festival weekend then as well as that then we have a race on we have two races on on saturday in leopardstown the ingleby which is a uh, listed race then we the the race that that diego valesquez won which is called champions juvenile stakes first of all it's a it's only a group two it's not a group one and it's over a mile and then the following day we have the actual champion two-year-old colts race which is the national stakes so we get four runners in one we get seven in the other should the two of them be joined together somewhere i don't mind if you take it out of leopardstown and put it to the core if that's where you want it and you call it the national stakes and it's the champion two-year-old race um does that make sense johnny five two-year-old races over two days and the same sort of horses competing in each of them with the exception of the the sales race which probably shouldn't be there yeah, I'd just like to say in general, this weekend was brilliant in when you've like Jerky, Natalie Lipini, and Ken Condon having a gr- group one winner as well. So that was brilliant. But I get I get what you're saying, Vinny. Like that race um that's run at Leopardstown, I've kind of mixed feelings on this because I've I've given out a lot about Cheltenham being diluted and horses can really Mullins to just keep them apart and as as you would. Um but like say if um, you know, say if all Aiden's two rows rocked up in the in the national stakes, it would have been a better race. And even those declared didn't run the first race that was run at Leopardstown on the Saturday. That was used that used to be a maiden. So I think that has its place. And with all due respect, I don't think you necessarily have my dear horse in that. But I, I I'd I'd probably say that there are so many good two rows around. I don't necessarily mind it. And Leopardstown is a different test. And I still thought the race on on Saturday was fascinating to see the Derby second favourite in it. Um, and in fairness, the national stakes is still there. But when you have the small field in the national stakes, I wasn't very happy about. And I do have questions about the City of Troy situation because the explanations to me don't really add up. I spoke to Aidan O'Brien this morning um, and he could go to the Breeders' Cup. Um, he was, Aidan said, which I just said, could he go to the Breeders' Cup? And he said, he, he, he said definitely he could or something to that effect. And I do wonder where they're going with him. As I say, they work their, they work their races from their stallion prospects back. And the stuff about the ground... I don't know what she made of it. it. To me, it doesn't really add up. Yeah, I don't know. What do you think, Emma? Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> a bit of a bit of rumor on social media. Was it Charles Byrne situation? Did the horse go to the races? But <laughs> uh, look, I don't know. Um, about the two-year-old races, like I, 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 I agree on that. Like especially the the one you mentioned, the group, the group two on the Saturday and the national, the national stakes on the Sunday. I mean, it's, it's just diluting really, like, especially in the national stakes when he got four runners, it really wasn't much of a spectacle at all. Um, like when you compare it to, I know Johnny mentioned there, the, 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 the dilution of Cheltenham, but I mean, look, it's seven furlongs in a mile. I'm, if there was only a seven furlong race, I'm sure most of them would show up anyway. Um, and I think that probably it, that probably takes away from the whole thing and the flat as well, because, you know, you've got these two year olds, you don't have much time to get to know them anyway. And then when they were running, they're not running against much competition. So that kind of takes away from the public being able to get behind the races as well, I think. So, yeah, the amount of kind of very similar races, it just makes it hard for you to get behind the horses because it's not as much of a contest and you're not getting as excited about the whole thing. So, yeah, it, def- it definitely takes away a bit from it. Um you know, when you're calling a champions weekend, I don't think you can dilute it down too much. Like you mentioned, the sales race and that, like they probably have to question, is that does that deserve its place on the card? Funny thing as well, Vinny, is like if you're saying, oh, seven furlongs in a mile and Emma's saying there's not much difference. The the horse that won the seven furlong race on Sunday is now basically favourite, second favourite for the derby. The horse that was scratched from the race is favourite for the derby. So like, it, it, it's immaterial practically, really. Um, and whether they should just re- reduce it to a seven race card and get rid of that champions race on the Sunday, like you should have more, you should have more runners for these races. Let's be honest. Okay, talking about another one that had a very poor turnout was the Ledger. We'd only four runners in the Irish Ledger. What's really interesting here is right, the Irish Ledger is worth six hundred thousand. There's a race coming up in two weeks' time in the Curra, the Irish is Arrowich, which is also worth 600,000. And most of the horses that should have been running in an Irish ledger ran or going to run in the race in two weeks' time. So you take a horse like Dawn Rising is in both. Dawn Rising was a 7-2 to two chance to win the Irish ledger yesterday. And Dawn Rising has 13 horses rated higher than him in the current entries for the Irish is Arrowich. What's that about? Like... For a handicap to have all these, and we're still talking about the Irish Ledger being a classic, it seems incredible that horses don't want to run on that. What do you make of that, Jim? I, I don't know. Yesterday was obviously odd, like Kiprios. I mean, the race itself, the horses are ran it. You have two exceptional horses, first and second in it. Um, to be fair to the Ledger, Vinny, in general, like it's an all-aged, um, I don't know if you want to call it a classic, but it's our all-aged um, staying race. It's 
basically our Gold Cup. Um, so I don't think, in fairness, I don't think field side should be a problem in this. It's open to pre pretty much any stayer. And maybe people looking at it this year will say, well, we'll enter anyway. Because, I mean, yesterday you would have made a good bit of prize money regardless. The, the Cesar, which thing is, is another matter because the prize money is so big in that now that it's... I mean, I would prefer more handicaps anyway at the top level because I think it's good for field sizes. But I, I suppose I'd be, probably prefer to give the benefit of the doubt yesterday that it just didn't get a good turnout because there was no real reason why you wouldn't rock up to the ledger with a good staying horse. I mean, it makes no sense to me. And I'm, I'm good to the evening ground. I mean, that, that field, I, I, I find that hard to explain, to be honest. Yeah, perhaps they should put that Cesarowicz back a bit further. Another two weeks further back could give you a month between the two races. Horses could run in both, whereas over those sort of staying trips, you wouldn't necessarily want to run twice in a fortnight. Uh, maybe that's the answer to it, but certainly something wrong somewhere when you see four runners on an Irish ledger and four runners in the national stakes the race before. So, anyway, let, let's take a, a closer look at some of the racing over the weekend, just going through it. Um, pick out any you want. I'll just mention some of the winners and you can tell me what you think. With Natalie Lupini with Kitty Rose in the opener, the Ingleby. Um, on Saturday at Leopardstown, then Diego Velasquez, 2.4 million he cost, uh, won the juvenile stakes. Tahira wins the matron for DK and Chris Hayes, Augustus Rodan, obviously, um, major performance there considering what we'd seen the previous day. And King of Steel, Kevin Stott rode that, and seemingly the owners weren't were a bit critical of his ride, and he has since lost his job with Ammo Racing. Uh, flight plan, Carl Burke, Daniel Tudhope, then we'd Adelaide River, which had finished second in the Irish Derby to Augustus Rodan, got his victory. Satin, Jessica Harrington and Shane Foley. Jessica looking well. I thought she was uh, kind of rocking it with the with the short hair. Looked a bit like Sinead O'Connor with the sunglasses on. And then we would Broadhurst, last to first in the uh, final handicap. That was some ride as well. Um, from Ryan Moore, four winners on the day for Aidan O'Brien. What did you make of that, Johnny? I backed Broadhurst actually. Like I had two bets on Saturday in the end, Broadhurst each way, and I backed um uh John Murphy's Grey Horse um do, 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 in the uh, White Birch. I backed him to finish in the first three, so that was a horrible, horrible watch. And I was I was actually um on the Saturday I was doing I have a radio slot on the Saturday for off the ball and what with the whole Ireland Stephen Kenny type situation, I really couldn't take the day off, so I had to work. So the show this week was half two to half four. The White Birch's race was basically half four. So they came to me right at the end with some question, and I was like, <laughs> just watching like a substantial bet. And it was a horrible race. They were well clear of everything else. And he was scrapping out for like second, then third, then fourth. And I was like, just at the end of the show, I said, lads, I, I've lost my train of thought here. But I backed for Otter and each way. I got a bad price, went off bigger. And I was watching the race, and I was thinking, is this the plan or like what's going on here? And it was, I was, it was amazing to watch. And uh, I, I have to say, I, I love that ride from Ryan Moore. I think they showed them um, another thing. I think they don't do enough, nearly enough of, by the way, is drone footage in racing because they showed a drone of it afterwards. It was, it was incredible. It was totally different. Like it looked good on the head. It looked good on TV, but the drone looked amazing um, altogether. But yeah, there were lots to take in. I have to say, I thought Natalia Lupini's horse, Vinny, was exceptionally good because she's, um, she's very big. Like she's really bred to be a, um, a three or four year old or, or built to be a three or four year old and um andy holding who does the speed figures he was saying before the race that her speed figure at nace wasn't much to write home about at all so i was willing to think that she was vulnerable on saturday and it was an outstanding performance the kevin stott thing seems a bit mad to me i mean if it was a good ride or a bad ride like why would you be involved with owners that just make a decision like that the following day i think it's mad stuff to be honest i mean imagine cool more doing something like that with all due respect um and then ken condon to win I mean, I thought I, I tipped up our power in that. I thought our, uh, I don't think our sprinters are great. I couldn't believe we won it, but I'm delighted for Ken, an absolute gent of the game. And then, to be honest, I got a really good kick out of Jerkeen winning um, with Colin Ryden. You've jumped on to Sunday, and we're going. I'm still on Saturday. 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 Sorry, yes. we're still on Saturday. Sorry, let me go back to Saturday. <laughs> so also on Saturday, um, yeah, the broader to hear, was it. It, to, to hear yeah. it. Well, this is the thing, right? Tahira was great, but like holding the songs was scratched with a lot of horses scratched over the weekend that annoyed me. And, and and there were probably legitimate reasons, and I didn't even look into it. But when when like I really thought holding the songs was a big danger, Dermot Well said that during the week. But when, when Tahira produced that performance, I was like, and we're talking about dividing up races. Imagine if Tahira were in the champion stakes, like what would she have done for the race? The champion stakes for me was really unsatisfactory the way it was run. It was run to suit cool more 100 percent right? So it was an unsatisfactory race, completely like a, a Bally Doyle piece of work. How would Tahira have done in that race? Yeah. What did you make of Saturday, Emma? 
Um, Augustus Rodan as well. Yeah, I, t- I think Tierra was probably the highlight for me, to be honest. Um, just even the reaction she got from the crowd, I'd say she got the biggest shout of the day. She, I think she's just one you can really get, you can really get behind her. She's just really likable, kind of Philly. Um, yeah, she, I, she was probably my highlight. Augusto Rodan, obviously. Look, I, I, I found the the whole ammo thing a bit funny, to be honest. Like, I mean, I'd say look, Ryan probably gave Augustus Rodan the best possible chance of winning. I suppose position he was in the whole way, but. I don't think Kevin Stark did a, whole, did a whole pile wrong. Like, I know the foreign jockeys coming to Leopards can, can often get criticised for, for sitting too far behind or anything, but I think he gave the horse a fair chance and he just didn't He just didn't pick up enough for me to, to really say he could have won it with any kind of different ride anyway. Um, but yeah, Augustus Rodan, like, as I mentioned earlier, kind of massive, massive performance made. And um, interesting now, will we see him again? Where we'll see him again? I know there was kind of mention of the Breeders' Cup whether he'll go there or not, I'm not sure. I think it was mentioned on RT Racing that they were given a, uh, they got a big offer from Asia to to send them as a stallion. Sixty million, I think, was the figure that they gave. But now, whether that's going to be an option, I, I I wouldn't, I couldn't imagine them selling him now. Um, he's kind of came back and proven himself again. I think uh, beyond too much doubt. I I actually backed Luxembourg in that race, and I I, I loved his run. To be fair, um. Had a small bit of doubt about him after the last day, but he came back and he's kind of a funny one because he puts his head up in the air, but he battles away anyway. Um, but yeah, no, there was obviously a massive day for uh, Cremore, but flight, pa- flight plan started a great two days as well for Danny Tuttle and Carol Burke. Um, kind of getting one back on the people who are doubting the English jockeys in in Leopardstown, but yeah, Broadhorse then probably the most impressive performance of the day nearly, um, in a way, I suppose the ride in itself, like to come from last to first in Leopardstown is probably the thing you don't want to do the most, but absolutely flew home and just topped off a massive day for you in a way. And I suppose, Vinny, this is like the, the other, the, the counterpoint to what you're saying about these horses, like Broadhorse is probably, with that turn of foot, probably could have run in the in the one of the group races, we'll say, but Aiden put him in a handicap, and and he was uh, for me he was one of the most competitive runners on the day because very well bred. He's running a handicap of ninety three cheap pieces on the first time, totally inexperienced. So that's the kind of I suppose that's the alternative viewpoint. If Broadhurst ran against, um, say Diego Velasquez, I don't know what he would have made in the what difference he would have made in the race. Okay, don't think he could have run against Diego Velasquez, could he? Um, anyway, uh, we, yeah. Race, yeah. yeah, yeah, sure enough. All right, we go on to Sunday. And um, people talking about Augustus Rodan and the um, the, the whatever the, the crazy training of Aidan O'Brien, the way that he was able to produce the horse to come back twice from the dead. Well, big gossy Charles O'Brien did something similar. Horse won the race for the second time. That horse, big gossy, was run in that sprint in 2020. It finished 19th in 2021. It won it in 2022. It finished 14th in the same race. 2023 comes back and win it every second year. Charles gets him up to win. Um, then we had Luminaire Rock, uh, Joseph and Dylan Brown McMonagall. The Flying Five was a bit of a shock, as we said. Um, Moss Tucker for Ken Condon, Billy Lee, Highfield Princess, Brad Sell, Art Power, all underperformed in that. Then you had the, the Moy Glare with um, Fallen Angel and Carol Burke and Daniel Tudhope again. Willie McCreary had a very good uh, second in that, I thought. Ves- Vespertillo, it's called. Yalang Yalang disappointed. Then we had the National Stakes, Henry Longfellow. That was a bit of a pudding of a race, to be honest with you. The ledger, as you say, the English ledger, Irish ledger winners, both clashing there. But Elder Elder Off was obviously far the straighter of the two, considering Kiprios hadn't run for a year. Then we had the Tattersall sales race. And then the last, which was won by Colin Keane for Richard Fahey, uh, probably a decent horse, that. And then the last, the Northfields handicap, Colin Keane for his dad as well. So what about Sunday? Emma, do you want to take it? What was your highlight from Sunday? Uh, like you mentioned, the sprint was a bit of a strange one. Um, I suppose everyone was kind of expecting Highfield Princess and Brad Sell to kind of go 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 head to head again. But I think, did you t- tip Moss Tucker last week? Or am I wrong? Yeah, so I did, yeah, <laughs> that, I that did, was, yeah. That was a big, yeah. <laughs> that was a big winner. Um, to well done, yeah, no surprise to me. I, I wouldn't have picked him out at all. Um, I should have followed your tip on that one, but... Yeah. Yeah, the National Stakes was a little bit disappointing, like I mentioned, small small field. Um, and again, the ammo situation, very strange in that one. Again, like if they're going to blame Kevin Stott for it, I can't really understand why they ran a pacemaker when the horse is stepping up to seven furlongs. They went way too fast and he just seemed to fade out. I don't think that was Brooklyn Air for his... We, for Against a horse who's favourite, it could be a derby horse. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think it was the horse's true running at all. And 
like I mean I presume it was the the owner's choice to put in the pacemaker not the jockeys so I don't think you can blame Kevin Stott too much for that so but look um St. Ledger again like we mentioned small field I thought it was a good one from Kiprias like it probably is as much as you could have expected, really, um, considering the injury he had and the long layoff. Like, I know people probably imagine that he probably would have won it, but Aiden kind of mentioned in his stable uh, media visit uh, last week that, you know, he was kind of just about ready to run. You'd imagine he'll he'll improve a lot for that. So Dawn Rising was actually quite eye-catching in that. Um, ran, a, ran, a, ran a really good race to kind of finish so close to the leaders. And he's going for the Cesaro Witch. Yeah, yeah. He'll, he'll go for one of the Cesaro Witches and... Like you'd imagine, he'd be fairly hard to beat if he shows up in one of those. Yeah, yeah, it was a good, it was a good weekend overall, wasn't it? There were some cracking races. I enjoyed it all. Oh, look, there's a few negatives you can pull out of it, but realistically, it's a it's a great innovation, isn't it? The Champions Festival weekend, bringing it, it used to be all sorts of weekends over the summer with these sort of races as well, and to bring them all into the one is perfect. Like the Dublin Racing Festival, I think they're two really good innovations. I have to say for the sport. Would you agree, Johnny Emma? Yeah, I, like, and I, you saw Joe Foley celebrating on Saturday, um, you know, and so, see, on live TV, and Joe was instrumental in this idea, I believe. And uh, I, I just would would say to the Curra and Leopards town like that, um, I spoke to Ray Mulvaney, the bookmaker, this morning, and he was saying the Curra, Curra business is very good, and bookmakers have definitely been critical of the situation, um, the position of the parade ring at the Curra, but he said uh, he, he got a good vibe from the place yesterday. I think the Curra and Leopardstown, Vinny, should be working this morning on getting a crowd in for next year and get, get, getting, get to all like businesses are all around Dublin and Kildare and all these regions, give them a good deal, right? This is your, going to be your end of summer day out, uh, be it at the Coral Epstone next year, and um, we'll give you a good deal, the fantastic facilities, great racing. I guarantee you, um, your, your, you know, all your staff and clients or whatever it is are going to have a really good day out and um, be beautiful facilities here. If it's Leopardstown, you're back in the city in 20 minutes. Um, you know, there could be a big sporting event on that we'll show you at the track. It's a fantastic day out. As I've said before, I think the Coral badly needs to get it straight railway station back i think then you could have it as a an excursion from basically all over the country to go race and brilliant day out and you're right at the racetrack as for the race in itself on the saturday as you mentioned charles o'brien vinny was really really good to see these um smaller trainers get a winner and i spoke to jerkeen at clonmel when he had a winner during the week and um as Colin got off the horse, you know, Colin was saying, you know, these wins for my dad gives give me as much pleasure as anything. And Colin, who'd had a pretty quiet weekend, then goes and wins the last couple of races. And I can't imagine how it felt to win um, the Northfield handicap, a, a premier handicap with that sort of prize money for his dad. The funny thing is, um, when you see Colin smile or Jer smile, it's hard to tell one from the other. They have the exact same smile. It's the warmest smile you'll ever get. They're just lovely, lovely people. And um, I, I got a great kick out of Jer Keane having a winner. He, I mean, how uh, to have a horse that's anywhere near good enough to run, not to mind win, um, I thought was fantastic. And we give out about the flat a lot, but there was a proper, proper sp spread of trainers winning races, winning races this weekend. And there was a lot to cherish, I think, from the whole thing. I have to say I love Champions Weekend. It's still my, my favourite weekend of the year in terms of um, flat or national hunt. I think the, the champion stakes is still the best race that there is um, and I, I feel that if we work hard we can actually build it into bigger bigger crowds particularly at the Curra. Yeah I'd agree the only way is up that's the bottom line uh, Emma one last thing I see that Lestol is on next week and Frankie de Tory was due to go there and he is now not going seemingly which is what I'm told anyway whether it's absolutely correct or not I don't know but we'll take it as being gospel They'd done a deal with him last year to go to Le Stoll and he, he picked up a suspension in uh, Germany a week or so before and couldn't ride, so he was suspended. So Frankie couldn't come, but he shook hands with them and said he'd come back this year and he'd do it for the same money he'd agreed last year, which is supposed to be four grand. This year, when they contacted him to see about coming next week, it's up to 15 grand, uh, and that's sterling as well. Is he worth it? I suppose he is. Oh, God, I, I don't know. Like... It's fair enough to give him, you know, he, he needs something, I suppose, to come because he's not going to be coming to Listowel just for a good ride in Listowel, I suppose. But, like, he he's 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 going to add a massive draw to Listowel. But, like, Listowel are going to get a massive crowd anyway. Um, He's going to add a lot of atmosphere, I suppose. But just the figures that are mentioned are, are, are you watering kind of money. Like, um, it's, I think it's kind of hard to justify it, to be honest. And I think if he shook his hand on the figure that was agreed last year, he sh he probably should have kept his word and gone for it. Um, 
kind of got some conflicting reports of Frankie at the weekend. You know, a lot of people approached him for pictures and he just walked straight past them. So, you know, he's like, it's it's all great um, to be paying him big money, but I don't know. I, 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 I don't, I, I couldn't justify it personally. Like a lot of people do agree that he should be getting that kind of money, but not for me, to be honest. Um, and it, like, it mightn't even be his last season, right? And he, it would look fairly foolish getting him 15 grand. He might come back next year again. Uh, you know, it. I, I wouldn't get like you, you, you've, you've, you've said it a few times. He mightn't even retire. And it's kind of, I, it's to me, it's looking more likely like he, he might, he mightn't be um, retiring at the end of the year. I think he mentioned uh, earlier in the week that if he got a big, if he got a big money offer from America or somewhere, he'd keep riding. So. Yeah, look, I think they were right not to give it to him. Um, I think it's just too much money, to, to be honest. The stole will get a great coat anyway. It's, it's always a great meeting down in the stall. And um, I think they're right to stick to their guns. And if he, if he shook on the money that was agreed last year, I think he should he should have um, kept his word. I agree, 100%. Okay, can you each give me a, a horse that you saw over the weekend you think will win next time out? Johnny, I'll start with you. Yeah, briefly, Vinny. I mean, again, I don't exactly know what the plan is with this horse, but for Natalia Lupini to have um, a winner um, as good as this, um, and for a horse that basically she's by Invincible Army, she kind of has, um, she's a nice pedigree, wouldn't be an, an amazing pedigree, but Kitty Rose, I thought was outstanding in the first race to Valley Lynch. Um, there were question marks as to what she achieved at Nace. She absolutely routed them. Content is a good horse, probably as good as Aiden could have run in the race. Um, see the boss, very, very promising back and forth. Travelled all over them. As I say, physically, she can only get much, much better. Uh, if she were trained in Valley Doyle, at what price she'd be for the Guineas next year? I don't know where she's going to go, but Kitty Rose, for me, was outstanding in the first of ever South. Very good. And over to you, Emma. Yeah, I mentioned him a while ago. Dawn Rising, I think. I think like he'll be he'll be very hard to beat in the Cesaro, which I think I actually put him up um, before York. I thought he might have gone for the Ebor, but he didn't end up going there. He went uh, to the ledger at the weekend. I thought he ran a massive race. Um, kind of just kept staying on at the end, and you know, back in the handicap company, I'd say he could take a fair bit of beating. I'm going to stick up one as well. Bo Pedro. It ran in the race with Broadhurst, and if you did get to see that overhead. Uh, camera the drone footage that they showed after the race um, of them coming up the straight you can see at the back you've Broadhurst in last Bo Pedro's in the middle of the pack at the back as well the two of them are coming through at the exact same time at the exact same speed and then Bo Pedro ran into a wall of horses and had to stop um, don't know whether the horse will turn up again used to be trained by Jessica Harrington's trained in the UK now it might turn up somewhere before the end of the season over in the UK but Bo Pedro will be one to watch certainly looked in top form in Leopardstown on Saturday so that's it that's our tips for the week Look, that's us. We're all out. We've talked about it all. We've gone through everything. Um, I'd like to thank our sponsors, Novi Bet, of course, at the end as we go off. And if you are placing a bet, do bet responsibly and subscribe to our channel. And hopefully we'll see you all again next week. Thanks for joining us. Bye for now.